It is Thursday night football. The Steelers travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. Currently, the Vikings sitting as three-point favorites to over under 43 and a half points. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. We're going to get into week 14. We got my favorite player prompt, spread pick, and a same-game parlay coming right at you. Now, last week, we'll do a quick recap. Last week, we cashed our same-game parlay on this game alone, and we cashed our money line parlay of the Seahawks, Chargers, and Steelers, plus 1,500 value on Sunday. So we had a pretty good game week for parlays alone. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button. We're less than 100 subscribers away from 15,000. Really mean a lot to me if you guys join the community. Help call on our shot. Go to the moon. But yeah, last week overall, we were 7-4 and four on player props, 1-3 and three on spreads and over-unders, which we continue to struggle with. But 2-1 and one on parlays, making up if you put a unit on each parlay. You made over 15, 17 units. So whatever. We'll keep getting into it. Now let's waste no more time. We'll get into this game. Like I said, Minnesota Vikings versus Pittsburgh Steelers. My player prop coming up. We're taking KJ Osborne over 41 and a half receiving yards minus 115. Now before you click off on the video, you're like, I thought this was Viking Steelers. KJ Osborne is a, is a Vikings wide receiver, and he'll be replacing Adam Thielen, who is out for this game. Now, Osborne hit this over last game when Adam Thielen went out very early in the game. Adam Thielen only played, I believe, like 8% of the snaps. KJ Osborne filled right in, played over 90% of the snaps, hit the over. Four receptions, 41, 47 yards, seven targets, and I think he gets it again today. Now, the Steelers in my opinion, aren't necessarily the best team in terms of cornerbacks. They have very good defensive linemen led by TJ Watt. Devin Bush has been up and down this season, but their cornerbacks have been bleeding in yards to these wide receivers. And in my opinion, if you're the Steelers, you're Mike Tomlin and you're their defensive coordinators, they're going to say, you know what, let's make someone else beat us besides Justin Jefferson. We saw what Justin Jefferson did last week, like 11 receptions, 180 yards, a touchdown. He was unstoppable. And I know you can't really stop him, but you can maybe contain him a little bit, putting a safety over top and making someone else beat you like K.J. Osborne. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to do that because Adam Thielen has that you know long-term track record, like one of the better receivers in the NFL. But you got a K.J. Osborne who has hit this over, 41 and a half receiving yards. I like it up to almost 50. He's hit this over in four games this season, so he's not he's not. Like, like a guy that hasn't had production he has over 35 receptions on the season and he's a guy that like I said he's only played like normally 40 to 60 percent of the snaps well he filled right in 92 percent of the snaps last week and all of the had all of Thielen's uh production normal the, the you look at the Vikings they run a lot of two three wide receiver sets more than a lot of other teams in the NFL and he's hit this over in both games this season when he's seen over 80 percent of the snaps he's almost guaranteed to see that today now the Vikings average the seventh most passing yards per game at over I believe 270 per game have Osborne slated to see around seven to nine targets exactly kind of what he saw last week he saw seven targets I mean Justin Jefferson won't see another 20 I mean he might he could but I just don't see it I think the Steelers will try to limit Justin Jefferson make someone else beat him now keep in mind prior to injury Adam Thielen had hit this over in five of his last six games so the I mean the the production's there KJ Osborne just has to step in fill in he's very capable very talented I believe second year guy I think he's got to do I think he's got he's this I think he's due a sizable workload a lot of targets this is a buy low opportunity I think he gets 50 plus receiving yards. Then let's move on to my over under pick. Moving with the Steelers, team total under 20 and a half points, minus 125. I like this at 20 as well. Now, the Minnesota Vikings defense. Well, it only tends to show up at home. Their, their kind of home road splits are really weird. Now, they currently are only allowing 19.8 points per game at home this season compared to about 29 on the road. And in those five games that they've played on, on, at home, and this is a team coming, come on, this is the Minnesota Vikings that just lost to the Detroit Lions. So they got to come in and play passionate. But in the five home games so far this season, only one team has gone over this 20 and a half points line. That would be the Green Bay Packers. And no offense to Big Ben Roethlisberger, he's not Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. Now, if you guys have seen the narrative over about Big Ben over the past couple, three, two, three years, what has it been? He's terrible on the road. Now, arguably, terrible at home too, but that's not why we're here. They're on the road where he's not been play very good the past couple of seasons. He completes 6% fewer of his passes. He has a QB rating down nine points, and over the last three seasons at home, he's thrown 27 touchdowns, six interceptions. On the road, 22 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, nearly double the number of interceptions. Now, the Steelers' offense as a whole... Uh, number wise, you know, they don't really do that great on the road either. They aver it looks numbers wise, they average the same amount of points at home versus on the road, but that is heavily skewed by a 37 point game they scored against the Chargers a couple weeks back on Monday Night Football. And the other four road games they've had, they've averaged just 16.25 points per game. They've gone under this line in three of their past four road games. I think that trend continues on Thursday night, where the product of football, truthfully, it's not the best. Thursday night football games can be pretty ugly, and you don't really, you, you leave more often than not, you know, a little bit disappointed. You're like, why did I watch this? Because sometimes Thursday night football is just like that. So this is the game between two teams. 
Now you have the Steelers, you know, going, they're up and down, Vikings up and down, losing the arguably the worst team in the NFL. It's just, you have two teams that you just don't know what the product that we're going to get on Thursday night football. So I'm going to take the Steelers. It's hard to prepare for a Thursday night football game. You really never know. Guys are banged up. So I'm taking their under 20 and a half uh, total points, team total points. I think they struggled to get the ground game going against a Vikings team that has to come in. They're playing for their playoff position. So are arguably the Steelers. I think both defenses show up a little bit. Now let's move on to same game parlay time. I'll talk about a spread kind of. Now, this cash last week over plus 300 value. Shout out to CD Lamb for really carrying the parlay. We got three legs, and this is honestly not the game I really love to make a same game parlay for, especially right now as I record this, 7.57 p.m. on Wednesday night. We don't have lines for Alexander Madison, so you really don't have, well, would love to put some of those in there, and Alexander Madison or Dalvin Cook, whoever starts for the Minnesota Vikings, but here's what I'm rolling with. Steelers plus 14 and a half, the under 54 and a half points, and Claypool 70 plus receiving yards. Now, we'll start with Claypool, because he's the weirdest leg in here. Now, Claypool, you know, he's this up and down guy. And he seems to actually do a lot better on the road compared to at home. And you know the Steelers, they love to throw it deep, especially you know, Big Ben Roethlisberger loves to take shots to Claypool. And I think they connect on some. Now, the Minnesota Vikings currently given up the seventh most 20 plus yard passes in the NFL. I believe they've given up about 45 this season. And Claypool is a guy that normally tries to stretch the field. I think he can get deep on these Vikings guys. Now, don't know if that will translate to points. Hopefully not because we have their team total under. But he has hit this over in a couple of, and I believe they're two pass road games. So I think he has a chance. I don't want to take his regular line. It's like in the 50s. I'd rather just go for the plus value. This is like plus 180 alone. I think Claypool has a chance to get that 70 plus receiving yards by himself. Now we talk about the Steelers plus 14 and a half in the under 54 and a half. Now obviously these are not the regular lines. The Steelers are plus three. The over under is 43 and a half. Basically adding 11 points to each side. There's something I know. Number one, the Minnesota Vikings refuse to blow out teams. That's just not what they do. They don't blow out teams very often, very rarely. I believe they've only maybe covered this line once, blown out a team by more than 14 points. It's just not what they do. They love playing close games, and that's what they're that's what they're they love doing. That's what the fans have come come accustomed to. Now the Steelers. While they might be bad on the road, they normally don't get blown out like that by two plus touchdowns. Mike Tomlin has a little bit of respect and dignity. They keep these games at least somewhat closer. You know, that defense is at least good enough to keep the games closer than not. And I'm gonna lean the under because 54 and a half points because Thursday night football game, you never really know what's gonna go down. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's a it's not a great product. The offenses tend to struggle. Both these two, obviously you got the Vikings down Adam Thielen. I do think KJ Osborne fills in. You got Ben Roethlisberger turning the ball over. It's just not gonna be a good product. And so I lean the under 54 and a half points. The under 43 and a half, not confident enough to take it in that. Both these two teams' offenses can score points, but under 54 and a half feels safe enough for me. So I'm gonna ride with it. Now, NFL week 14, best bets will be live later Thursday morning. Better already be live by the time you're watching this. So go check out that video. Our podcast was posted yesterday. We gave our upset picks for week 14, a bunch. We pre previewed the whole slate, talked about college football playoff. We did a lot of things, always checking out those. Also, we have our weekly live stream every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, talking about the NBA slate. And of course, our da daily NBA best bets videos every single morning. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. It's been Austin. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.